Here we are recording another episode of the Dirty Dirty Podcast with Dirty Ron McDonald, your host. And I am here with my man, Blake Bulletproof, uh, Bulletproof Troop. I should not have smoked that blunt with all those bees and that. Yeah, Bulletproof this. Troop. Hello, because he's the shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, I know Blake Troop from, uh, we're in the same industry where we touch other sweaty men in our fancy underwear. Or I, I don't know how you describe it to your friends. But that's how. Um, yeah, so I either touch sweaty men in my underwear and we pretend to fight, yeah. or I touch sweaty men in my underwear and we actually do fight. And occasionally now, I throw on a suit and talk while other sweaty men in the underwear touch each other. Yeah, I, you, you're the triple threat of all this shit. Like you, you, st- you started in uh, you started like MMA fighting. Correct. And then uh, started jumping into commentary. And then, and then into pro wrestling. Is that how that That's exactly went? right. So I, I call myself Bulletproof Troop. No, for dropping warheads on people's foreheads. And I built the foundation of my brand in legitimate combat sports, particularly mixed martial arts and submission grappling. Um, built up quite a reputation, you could say, there. Four in one of my last five fights, including a co-main event on the Fox Sports Network, challenging for lights out extreme fighting's 205-pound belt. Then began segueing into professional wrestling because I essentially created a professional wrestling personality in That's legitimate combat sports. That's what it was. It was amazing. And um, thank you. I appreciate that. I put a lot of thought and effort into it. And that got the attention of professional wrestling, which brought me to a commentary position on Dave Marquez United Wrestling Network's Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, now known as Championship Wrestling, where I came in, got introduced to the wrestling world as a combat sports expert while also then beginning my training. So I was able to be in front of a wrestling audience yeah. as I got better in the ring before having to get in the ring. Well, c- correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't you show up at a couple of the Bumps and Bruises shows? I did that, show up to a couple of the Bumps and Bruises okay, shows. Okay, that, because that's, that's, I think that's where I saw you originally. That was definitely my first... Um, and you had gotten in the ring, cut a promo and shit. And I was like, oh, this. not only do you have the look, right? Which, I mean, the, the combination of having a good look and being able to talk... It's like, it, it's extremely rare. I appreciate yeah. that. So people remember people that are able to talk. Like, you right. say Ric Flair, what do people think? Woo. They don't yeah. think figure four leg lock. Yeah. You think of Hulk Hogan, what do they think? Yeah, the, the fucking You know, not pose. leg drop, big boot leg drop. Yeah, you yeah, think of the rock, sure. maybe the people's elbow. Maybe the, but maybe the people's elbow, for sure. people's, you know, uh, More the eyebrow and more eyebrow. the jabroni. And, yeah, Jab- yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's, so the way to really, in my opinion, connect with an audience, because there are an incountable number of people who are incredible in-ring performers. Yeah. That just don't get the audiences, um, and even if you do really cool shit, you got to be able to connect with the audience by talking to them. You, you, make, you make them feel, it's, it's like, <laughs> just like politicians and, and uh, priests and shit do, they make you feel something real that isn't real, you know, and that's what the best pro wrestlers do. Well, a lot so, of pro wrestlers go into politics. Some of y'all might not be real, but Bulletproof Troop is as real as it gets. Kind of like the UFC's early slogan. Yeah. And that's one of the things that uh, I really like about the brand that I created and brought to professional wrestling is I'm not Blake Troop, a guy who used to compete in martial mixed martial arts that now does professional wrestling. I'm Blake Bulletproof Troop, the mixed martial arts fighter in professional wrestling. Yeah. Where I created this brand and then brought it over. But you're absolutely right. The first moments I had... In professional wrestling, we're at Bumps and Bruises, and it all started with a little spot between myself and a veteran out of New York named Greek God Papadon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, Mike, the owner of Bumps and Bruises, yeah. really liked me and wanted me to do a spot with Papadon, and uh, so Papadon mentions me in a promo, and he had a match against a guy named Doug Miller, uh, or what, uh, Douglas, Douglas James, James. Is, is his wrestling name. Yeah. And Greek God Papadon mentioned me in a promo, and so him and I went back and forth a little bit, and Doug James got kind of offended about it, which now that I'm in the industry, I understand taking some of the eyes off his match and more so hyping a potential match with Greek God and I, which I apologize for that now at this point in time, Douglas James. I mean, I, 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 I know Doug. I don't know. Do you, you think he was, did he like, yeah. I don't think he was super mad. He was just like, well, why don't you do motherfucking have a match? Like, y'all want to go back and forth? And I get that now. At the point in time, I didn't. Where like he said something like that, and I was like, "Cool, well, fucking fuck you too, then, kid." <laughs> and um, but I, I, I don't want to speak for him. I know, you know, he's he's a generally nice guy. I don't know if maybe he, he might have, you know, uh, said something. I don't know in character. So I, I, I would like to give him the benefit of the doubt. So, I know Doug well, looking back, I agree. Probably yeah, said yeah. something kind of in character, and I fired right. back at him. Um, but so long story short, I come to the show, and, and Mike wanted me, Greek God Pop and I to do a. Some type of no t- no touch spot, you know. Um, yeah. 
And so I'm sh- I was supposed to show up to the show a little early. I couldn't make it because I had training and some mixed martial arts training. Totally. And so I get to the show a little bit after it started. So I keep going, Michael, like, hey, what's up? What are we doing? You know, he's like, oh, give me a few minutes. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, push me off a few times. The next thing I know, Greek God Papadon's coming out. Ha. <laughs> and so, like, you know, <laughs> GGP comes out, has the match with Douglas James. Uh, and as he's, and as you remember, bumps and bruises. At the show you were on it, there was no, like, walkway. You guys even came through the crowd then, right? Um, I was on, I think I was, I was booked for all of them. I wasn't able to make one of them. So there's one where you were in, like, Gardena, the, out where I cut the promo. That was a different okay. one. It was at the indoor venue in, um... I was on a lot of drugs Like, downtown time, L.A. So all those kind of days. Uh, but you remember the, the bar in downtown L.A. where, um... The, it's all standing room. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. it's all standing room. And yeah. so I happened to be standing kind of by the entrance... And so Greek God popped on walks. So basically right past me to come out. Has been, and as he's walking back, he sees me, makes eye contact with me. And walk, beelines it straight up to me. And like chest up. And so I'm like, oh, all right, cool. We're going to do something, you know. We're going to yeah. improv some shit. Veteran walked up to me. Like, so he's like, move. I'm like, motherfucker, you move. You walked up to me. He's like, I'm going to give you the count of three to move. I was like, I ain't motherfucking moving. He's like, one, two. And then pushes me in the face. And like, this is all not, bro, all not, not talked about. Okay, so... I was there for that, and I witnessed that, and I I thought there was a are you like so you're not, you're not working me right now, right? Like no, that, so well here's 100% the thing. Shoot. It was talked about, and we we're both in on it. There was gonna be a no touch spot, but we never spoke details. We're right. supposed to talk details of the show. And if you fucking pie face, and I'm but at the same time, what am I gonna do? Fucking lay this dude out and have like no. But I mean, you're gonna. I was upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sure. I played it off all right because all my friends they saw me video like, bro, why did you fuck that fool up? I'm like, it's wrestling, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Real life, since you had he fucking done that, or had there not been a discussion about that, yeah, I'd have fucking unloaded on the dude. Uh, le- okay, let me ask you this because you know you're you're a trained fighter, and you know out out in public, you know like there's 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 rules, you know like. If yeah, so, no, no, no. To so an like, extent, like, agreed. You know, if like you got to stay a certain you know distance away from me. If you get in my face, that's an invitation. Th- th- those kind of rules. So me, at the, if you're asking me what I would do, and if that was a real life situation, me today, yeah, would probably handle it much better than me then. Me then yeah. had a, some random motherfucker walked up to me and pie faced me. I'd yeah. have fucking unloaded on him. Imagine, made sure they were sleeping on the floor before I was done hitting him. I'm not talking about a wrestling situation. I'm just talking about like in in general. You know, like out out in public. I would imagine that. <laughs> It's, it's it takes a lot to get me to hit somebody now. Absolutely, and like, and I, I have to. Well, you're a big fucking dude. So, it's kind of, so I'll well, I'll give me a few minutes to well, let me finish that story, and then yeah, I'll get yeah, to sorry. learning about not hitting people because it absolutely has been something I have gotten a much better control of, and I'm actually really happy with myself for doing that because I are you familiar with control your narrative? Yeah. So I will talk about we'll talk about control your narrative next. Let me finish right. GGP. But yeah, it's, it's there was discussion of a spot. No touch. There was not, no contact spot. I didn't yeah. get fucking paid for that. Like, if I'm getting touched, I'm motherfucking getting paid. Right. Um, you know, and, like, he, see my, he sees me and walks up to me and, like, and so, like, I'm like, all right, cool, we're doing this. And then um, it gets played out, and I'm cool with At the time, I'm cool with fucking working all the boys and everybody. I don't give a fuck where I'm like, nah, yeah. it wasn't blah, blah, blah. Like, to an extent, that was a work. Because had that not been discussed, I would have fucked that dude up. Right. Regardless, I wouldn't have thought about the implications of potentially impacting your wrestling career, blah, 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 or them losing the venue. Like, I'd have fucking unloaded on a guy. Like, hey. But I was wrestling fairly used upset to be about all it. tough but, guys. <laughs> but everybody fucking believed it. And, like, you know, people like, are they cool, blah, blah, blah. Like, and he played like we super weren't cool, which I, I told him and I was cool with this. Well, but that motherfucker rode. I gave him a ride back to Mike's house that night. So, like, <laughs> you know, everyone thinks we fucking hate each other. We rode home with me. Beautiful. Um, and I was at that point in time down to work the boys because I didn't give a fuck. I was new to the industry. I'm like, um, I, you know, and I'd rather not know things like that. Like even on shows where I'm on, you know, like I, I'm a, yeah, sorry if I spill, I killed the magic for you. Oh, Santa no, no, Claus no. isn't real. Yeah, six, <laughs> six years later or whatever. No, that's all good. But like, you know, I, I, I like to be a fan. Like there's so much wrestling and I've seen so much of it. I've been a fan since I was fucking born and I've seen so much of it that I like to be a fan of something to get, you know, to be invested, to be emotionally invested into something and make it, you know, make right. it feel like it's something. A thousand percent. And I almost don't like pulling the curtain back sometimes, particularly in a broadcast environment like this where yeah. anybody can watch it. Um, but that's also been believability, is something I try and bring to professional wrestling, mm-hmm. whether it's my move sets, my promos, all of it, where I try and make it very, because I grew up pro, pro wrestling is my first love when I found out it wasn't legitimate competition it broke a young Blake Troop's heart in like 95, 96 
96, 97 is when UFC really started catching more public traction and stole Young Blake Troop's heart. Yeah. First loves wrestling, second loves fighting, and I'm kind of having a fun threesome with the two, which is awesome. Yeah. Love threesomes, by the way. <laughs> um, shout out to all the guys at the bathhouses. <laughs> shout out to you. all the girls at the bathhouses, baby. <laughs> Hello. Um, no, I was just fucking with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hey, yeah, hey, who, hey, who can you make fun of for being gay if it's not your buddies, right? You know? Oh, wait, no, I didn't know it was a gay joke. No. <laughs> you know he's been sucking dick at the bathhouse. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's how I know. That's how I know. So those handlebars, it's for them to wrap around and give a little, Th- that's a little what, thrust, that's what these, huh? Fucking, <laughs> that's what these extensions are for. Exactly. Like, uh, oh, right shit, in. they're rainbow colored. I didn't even notice right, that earlier. Look at that beautiful shit right there. Yeah, they're cute. Right. Well, I, I, mean, keep, I guess I keep speaking of my hair on the top. <laughs> check this thing out I got going on in my eye. It's oh, not yeah. gay sex, though. Oh, uh. Yeah, so I was recently down in South Florida, and um, there's this wrestler named Cha-Cha Charlie, and I was playing with his mom's butthole, and apparently at some point in time, I must have touched my eye, because I got myself like a little dirty Sanchez growing out this motherfucker. A sty in your eye. Yeah, a sty in my eye. There we go. And we're at Pig's Radio. It's a pig sty when it's in here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, be- beautiful fucking yeah. way to put, pull that I'll together. Put the glasses back on. I'm self-conscious about it. In a fucking cool as shit so I can wear glasses indoors, you know? Very few people can pull off the glasses indoors without yeah, a doubt. I agree with that. I mean, but at the same time, who's going to say something to me? And I guess that's also a good segue back into hitting people. <laughs> Smoke Box Jerky Company. Check it out. The box brand has everything. Mushies, medicated jerky, scissor, nerd rope, nerd rope bites, all sorts of mushy gummies and chocolates. You can get them on Instagram at Smoke Box Jerky Co. The fucking cool as shit so I can wear glasses indoors, you know? Very few people can pull off the glasses indoors without yeah, a doubt. I agree with that. I mean, but at the same time, who's going to say something to me? And I guess that's also a good segue back into hitting people. <laughs> so, okay, I, I, I've, I've been in a couple, you know, altercation, altercations in public, but, you know, like... What 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 are your rules for somebody if you know like do you give them the benefit of the doubt how do you try because I'm sure you you would try to deescalate a situation so yes so there's a Generally, couple of things right. and I would say like uh, the the number one part of it is at the end of the day I gotta be able to go home and look myself in the eyes when I brush my teeth right so even with I, the sty in your eye even with the sty in my eye uh, <laughs> I just try and look in the other eye you know yeah. like <laughs> I'm just paying attention to the left one. <laughs> This right one fucked up. Um, but so, which for a very long time, my rule of thumb has been, I got to be able to look, so if someone's really pushed the issue, or I might feel like less of a man for not standing up. Not that you got to go beat everyone's ass, but like, sometimes shit's a little over the line, you know? Like, totally. Um, a, so, and then B, as I've gotten better about things, um, I would say another thing with the, the like two like, almost deal break parts, if someone touches me. Right. Once the touch barrier has been broken, um, even if it's like a little push or a nudge. All right, if, if, where's the line now? See, I, I would I would imagine because when, when I was a bouncer at a strip club, I was amazed that they hired me because of my stature. And they go, well, no, that's why we hired you. Because if we got big guys in there that are jacked, people get all drunk and they try to start fights with people. Have you experienced anything like, oh, you experience you, like so that? So people all the time, like, oh, I bet nobody ever fucks with you and you would be surprised. No, I, it's the total opposite. How, op- bro, like, and guys, I'll walk to in the room. To test themselves. And exactly, yeah. guys yeah. almost feel like, I gotta step up. Or totally. Like, and they're like, What's crazy though is they'll like say like low key but not quite like trying to step up type shit and then it's almost like what well, what's that supposed to mean right like or they'll like think that I, by somehow challenging me boost their manhood and stature in the room or something but right. they, but the thing is it won't be like a full on challenge it'll be like a low key passive aggressive like little quip or talking shit or like totally totally and that's not shit with the, what's that supposed to mean. Yeah. And that motherfucker's like, because they ain't going to stand behind the fuck they're saying. But so you'd, you re- you'd rather call them out like that than, like, I'd rather figure someone. a way to make fun of them? Oh, embar- well, okay. Well, it's, it's kind of a lead I would to imagine. fucking embarrass them. But I got yeah, to tell yeah. me, I got a black belt and shit talking. I love going back and forth. I, I, you know, I, yeah, I've, so um, I've seen. So but I've so, seen. like, one example, and this is, fuck, this has to be, like, seven or eight years ago, where guys, like, random guy, I'm out with a handful of friends at the bar, and I'm sitting at the bar, like, spitting game at the bartender. A guy next to me, I keep saying, like, little shit, and, like, I'm like, fuck, that, blah, blah, blah. I'm, like, kind of have a few of those, and then like, fucking nudge me, and I stand up. I was like, listen, motherfucker, you touch me again, we have a problem. He nudged you? Like, a little, but we're sitting in bar stools next to each other. Okay. But it was like, yeah, I said something kind of like, 
But like we had homies like that. So bro. wait, you were you were talking to him? Yeah, we were going. But like he's like low key. I think fighting was on. Like low key, kind of like said some fucking. That's when it not happens. Not quite man. pushing it, but like. That's when it happens. What's that supposed to mean? Like, you know, like gonna like fucking nudge me and like so I fucking slam my stool back and say, "Hey, motherfucker, don't touch me!" Like I don't know, you like that? Blah 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 blah. And he fucking stands up, and tries to posture up to me. So before he even says shit, I just fucking push the fuck. I mean, like tumbles, backflips over a chair, fucking a bunch of bar stools fall over. He pops up, he's like, "What the fuck, man?" Blah 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 blah. Like. Bitch, you knew you were motherfucking sitting here testing the limit. Of course. And then you fucking nudged me, and I stood up like, what's up? And you stood up like you were about to motherfucking do something. Yeah. You're lucky I just pushed you and then fucking knock you out. Totally, totally. And bartender's like, you guys both got to go. And I was like, fuck that. You saw this dude fucking sitting here talking shit. And she's like, I know, Hugh, you're totally in the right here, but po- apology, you all both have to leave. Yeah. Um, you should have just gone back to your car, put on your wrestling gimmick. Be like, I didn't wrestle that time. We just fought. I, I, but... I, 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 I'm Jake Troop. <laughs> Blake's my brother. He's gone. What an asshole, right? I can come back here and sit and enjoy you know, the rest of Unfortunately, I stand out. It's like you with your handlebar mustache. Ain't yeah. no being... I was somebody that wasn't me. Uh, uh, I, I love when so, you know, somebody's trying to be nice to me, and they're like, they're like I'm not sure... You know, like whatever situation, professional situation. Like, I'm not sure if I've met you before. I'm like, come on. Like, yeah, you you know you remember this if you yeah. know, if you met me. I would sure I'm sure it's the same thing with you. Yeah, and I forget a lot of things now after a decade of pro- competing professionally in mixed martial arts, like two decades training in it. So I forget a lot of people, but people remember me all the time. With, without a doubt, without. But you know, like I feel like that's the best compliment because not only did you do something dope that they enjoyed, they remembered it. And they stop their day and your day to tell you about it. Like, how many people do you think that there are that see you, you did something dope that they remember, but they don't have the balls to, or in passing, or they see you from across the gym and they just d- didn't work out. You know, that I think that that's why I love doing the shit that we do. Yeah. It's, it's for that. So know? I've actually had a good amount of those moments, and there was one that stands out particular to me. As you can see, I walk around this big grenade chain. Which is... Which Fucking is like amazing. 10 pounds. Everyone thinks this thing's fake, but this thing's like steel all the way down to this grenade. Um, but so WrestleMania in New York, what was that like? By, by the way, you have the best catchphrases for any MMA fighter that I've had. I, I don't know who else even has any catch. Who has catchphrases? Nobody, bro. It? But so that's all <laughs> development. That And I'll get into that moving to Florida Sorry, yeah, go and ahead. so forth. But no, I appreciate the comment. I've put well, no, no. A, a ton of thought into it. Which has also been directed thought um, that's been like helped be guided by a coach. Where I came up with it, For sure. but having somebody help me look into ways of developing things. Where um, I'll save that for for a little bit later on. Uh, but uh, back to the story about the grenade change. So, yeah. New York WrestleMania. Um, you know, and as as you all know, if y'all go to wrestling, twenty nineteen. Oh, uh, New York. Thirty five. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. So I wear this grenade chain fucking everywhere for like five days. I get there, I think, on Wednesday. Impact's Thursday, blah, blah, blah. Go to, or maybe it was even got there Tuesday. Was I think I was at like GCW stuff Wednesday. Impact Thursday, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just wearing, just going to a bunch of different shows rocking the grenade chain. Mm-hmm. And I think it might even be gold at that point in time, which I, why it was gold. I don't fucking know. It's just gold. Uh, <laughs> been developments along the way. Um uh, but so I go to a fuckload of shows and uh, like impact them there with RVD. So I keep going in and out of the back and like I, the way I look, I can walk into fucking without locker rooms and a lot of different without places without fucking anybody saying anything. If I can do it, you can do it times ten. <laughs> um, but so now I'm at a um, watch party for WrestleMania. It was called uh, it was Bullet Clubs, whatever I don't remember. But they had like a watch party for WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, and at that point in time, it was just on Sundays. Now we got two-day WrestleManias. Right, which, you know, I don't blame them. Uh, that's smart, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, you, if you can do it, do it. Right. So, so you can do. Uh, bullet, club, bullet Club Block Party is what it's called. And so like, I'm just, I don't, I go to New York by myself because I don't give a fuck. I don't need to know people. I like go out and I'll do my, do my own shit and I'm passing out stickers. And so there's one point where I'm up on a balcony talking to uh, this lesbian couple. We're outside bullshitting about wrestling and life and blah, 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 like... And so after talking to him for like 10 minutes, like, hey, can we tell you a secret? I'm like, yeah, what's up? I'm like, we saw you at Impact walking around with your grenade chain, and we're like, look at this motherfucking goof with this big chain, blah, 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 <laughs> X, Y, Z. And I'm like, and now we're talking to you, and you're totally fucking cool as shit. We had this total misconception of who you were, with blah, yeah. blah, blah. And I was like, you know, I think that's, I appreciate that. But the thing is that really matters to me is y'all been walking around with thousands and thousands and thousands of people at wrestling shows and regular people. 
And of everybody you've seen in New York, you remembered me four days later, and you saw him, didn't have any interaction with me. You saw me from a distance a few times, right? And you still fucking remembered me, without a doubt. And they're like, "Oh my God, you're right." It's like that's why I do it. I know, I know, it stands out. You think this motherfucker's comfortable to wear? It's like ten pounds. It seems. Like, watch, feel this thing. Put this thing on for a few minutes. Oh shit. But yeah, right? It ain't no Already. joke. Already ain't no joke. Yeah, you wear it for like five minutes. Dropping warheads on people's fucking foreheads, There we go, bro. baby. When hand grenades start flying, bodies start dropping, dirty run. No shit. I think my, my probation officer is going to see this and be like, you had weapons of mass destruction around your neck, goddammit. I mean, I'm technically a weapon of mass destruction, baby. Oh, shit. I Put a chokehold on you and have another one around your neck. Register you at the fucking door here. Um, But so... It's memorable. Um, and so, like, that, that, that's step one with it, though. It's like, I feel if, if you're going to be in entertainment, first of all, you got to have a look. Because thousand they already judge you on your look, and you're not even going to get to open your mouth, as in this situation. But then you got to be able to talk, right? Yep. And, and then number three is, what do you actually do, though? That, that really comes third, doesn't it? I mean, My, it's like, yes. look first gets you there. Like, your ability to talk, like, like solidifies that notion in their head this guy could do it and then your ability comes in third thousand percent and i actually think that those are you know like i think one and two could be somewhat interchangeable in today's modern wrestling because you have so many no, guys dude, think about guys that have a look that can't fucking talk i mean i i don't want to sit here and name names if you want to name names cool. no i definitely but, have learned not to do that well, yeah, we, <laughs> But we we know, we know the guys that are like, oh shit, you have a great look, you can do these moves and all that shit, but you can't talk for shit. Or you can talk, but you don't have a good look. It, the only thing that is not teachable is talking. I mean, like you you can look. I at mean, it. look to an extent. You can't you can't like you can teach learn to be fucking eight you, inches taller. You didn't. Well, sure, sure, sure. But you didn't look like this in fucking fourth grade. True. Same with me. You know, like you can you can enhance a look. Right, you can work out, right. you can get bigger, smaller, whatever the fuck. But it's like your ability to talk and think on your toes. Oh, a thousand percent. Think on your toes. I mean, like, how many times have you been in a situation in, a, in an entertainment, sports entertainment thing, whether it's MMA commentary or pro wrestling, where you thinking on your feet popped the crowd and got you noticed or remembered or whatever because of your ability to think on your feet. That and that's why I say black belt and shit talking. Because right. sometimes you got to be able to improv right there. You got a script? Well, let me take you off script for a second and see how you can hang. <laughs> Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, you know... Um, I don't. I hate talking politics. I really do. But like with the election and all that shit coming up, like it's it's hard for me to still not watch one of the best shit talkers of our generation, Donald Trump, out there. Because all I can think about, and this is how I see him, as a Hall of Famer in pro wrestling. I don't see him as a real politician. That's just the way I've been able to disassociate to try to you know make crazy situations less crazy. And I'm not saying one way or the other. But like, hey man, talk about a black belt and shit talking. Like, you know, hey. Uh, that could win him to be the free leader of the world again. Who knows? We'll, we'll see, I guess. Hey, if, and I'm not pushing one side or the other, but if totally. getting shot in the ear and then popping back up and being like, fight, oh, fight, dude. doesn't win this motherfucker. What election. a promo. What a promo. Bro. What a promo. Right. What a fucking promo. Oh, my God. And improv. Yeah, Imp dude. F oh, my God. Like, he was like, oh, man, I'm not dead. Fight, fight. He's like, oh, man. How, how do you have so much gold just co bleh, coming out of your mouth? Yeah. Oh, man. It's amazing. I love yeah. watching that. Uh, and before I get a bunch of hate, I didn't vote for Donald Trump, but no. I also I always vote independent. It's fuck the two party system. I, before I get any Donald Trump hate, because the other side sucks too. Oh, they all man, they all suck, dude. They all suck. Like yeah, let's no more politics. No politics. We, we weren't even talking politics. We we're talking somebody's been. But that was the best promo ever. Fight like I was like, oh, oh, right, God. this fucking savage, bro. Straight up, America. Straight up, straight up, straight up. <laughs> um, so, okay, so if as we're getting more into idiocracy though with politics, we can we can do a good segue here. What other po what other pro wrestlers do you think? Because you know the movie Idiocracy, yeah, where Hector Cam or Camacho, whatever the fuck his name, was, what pro wrestling president? What pro wrestlers do you think could be a good president? That's a good question. Um, well, I mean, I I look at. Can't Glenn Jacobs is the mayor of wherever the fuck. Yeah, so I think in terms of political experience, I don't know. See, I don't know a ton about his politics or political choices. I think because he has experience in office, he's a front runner for that type of position. Um, you know, again, I don't know any of Dwayne Johnson's politics, but I think he's a very charismatic guy who, from what he seems through his social media. Pushes people to be better and an encourager and like a hustler, an entrepreneur who makes things happen and. 
You know, like I said, almost especially being very charismatic. Super charismatic, um, yeah. But at the same time, I think that What's going it on requires here? <laughs> a little more than just um, <laughs> charisma. I thought we were about to fucking have a party. <laughs> I know, hey, um, one of the strippers are coming out. Um, but so it's... I mean, we're in tough. Compton, and this is where they, they film all these fucking music videos and shit. You know, tough to say. Um, I think somebody else you could probably do very well in politics is, is Triple H because there's no way you get to the top of a industry that's all oh politics yeah. to a certain extent and become probably one of the most powerful wrestlers in the industry of, like, of all time almost. Oh, and maybe almost be, most influential be. because he brought in NXT, which is a new flavor of wrestling. I mean, The yeah. entire like new generation of up-and-comers, they're all Triple H babies, I guess. I mean, like, given anything... Well, I mean, it's like... I, I agree with you to an extent. Triple H, though, he didn't come up with a new idea to have, like, a developmental territory. It was just the way that they did that. Right. And, you know, like, I guess under, under his guidance, they are, they are able to structure it where it, it's not... It, the business isn't focused on one top guy anymore. They want... Everybody's got to have a good story, and they do. Like, whereas all throughout the history of wrestling and how Vince McMahon came up in wrestling, it was like, your attraction is the main event. And, like, everything else is just, you know, like, leading up to the fucking main event. You know, like, they're all decent matches or whatever, but there wasn't a whole lot of story. I mean, when you go back and watch pay-per-views, they tried to do it, but the way that they do it now, like, the, everybody's got a fucking a good story that you can get behind, and they don't have to rely on their top eight to ten guys being on every show every week all the fucking time. They can shuffle guys in and out. Right, but so things like that, being able to come in and... Not just change an industry or, like, have a massive hand in influencing its evolution. Because I would definitely say profession, that's an evolution in professional wrestling presentation. Totally. Um, but then another, like I said, massive aspect is being able to navigate the politics in this industry. Totally. Um, and to get to such a powerful political position that, man, if you could do it in wrestling... Fuck. <laughs> well, uh, you know, you you're, you've been in the professional fight game, so you know how I get. Well, some people will politics call it there's corru different though. Co corrupt, but but I mean, like you could actually overcome politics by beating somebody's ass if you were exactly. able to. That's the difference in pro wrestling. It's just like fucking Hollywood, where it's like you're chosen, right? And if you are, you know, and you got to do your role, you know, you know your role is shut your mouth. I mean, there you go, right there, hundred percent. Right. So that's like a thing where, for example, the new welterweight champion. Uh, Muhammad Bilal, that dude was like, like what, 14 fight win streak before they finally gave him his title shot? Yeah. And the thing was, Dana, for whatever reason, I don't know any backstory, maybe Dana doesn't dislike the guy. I don't know why they didn't give that guy a title fight for so long. Yeah. But eventually he got it. Yeah. Because in fighting, you just can't stop a guy. Like in things totally. pro wrestling, you might never get in the fucking door. Right. You're that fucking good, though. They can't deny you. It's the same in comedy. You know, like, uh, I, I, you know, dipped my foot into the stand-up comedy world. It's the same there. It's like, funny overcomes. If you're funny, you will get there. And in fighting, if you are badass, you fuck people up, you will get there. Right. It's not like that in pro wrestling. And yeah. that's why I put an ode to Triple H for being able to get himself to that position where, like, dude, he... And the kid, you're married to, to Vince's daughter, dude? Right. What the and you're taking the guy from... You're talking about political, like, a... Because I think the political realm is a very similar game of playing politics. I mean, it's named after the motherfucking <laughs> industry yeah, of that's politics. That's what it is. So I would say, like, those two people I could see doing very well in pol politics. Again, I have no idea what their political views are mm. or if I'd be supportive of them being a politician. But I think those are three names or two names, at least the Rock and Triple H, that could go relatively far in it well I, you know it, it, linda mcmahon was in the senate linda mcmahon was on uh in the cabinet for uh donald trump at the republican national convention uh when they announced the uh vice president candidate with trump uh the guy that looks like he's from tucker and dale's fucking kill or versus evil or whatever yeah you know what i'm talking about uh so vance or whatever jd vance yeah jd vance so um linda mcmahon was sitting right next to fucking donald trump that night so you know they that family is not too far out of politics. You know? Yeah. They're, they're, they're I mean, I that. could even see Vince doing well, you know, with, like, the amount of, like, weird sexual things that I hear in the political world. Like, Vince might not be far behind on that potential being a president thing. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, well, you know, <laughs> hey, he's at, he's at his fair share of fucking scandals, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah. what I meant by that. Yeah. <laughs> he could jump right in. Jump um, right in there. 
Uh, so hey, which that's not even a dig on Vince, because man, I'd be fucking a bunch of bitches too if I was Vince. Like, I mean, like it's it, just isn't keep that, paying them, bro. Isn't that just uh, keep paying them? Ooh, I don't, you know, I don't know. I I don't agree with that. She got her money. She you know she should shut the fuck up. I thought up. she was like, still owed money. Again, I don't fucking know. She got right? some. Like, nah, like. <laughs> just got hey, the tip, and I'm not talking about money only. <laughs> didn't she get a dope ass job too? I mean, like, I'm not, Ryan I'm not Dick. condoning it. <laughs> I'm not condoning it. But hey, she got some perks. I didn't get pissed on, from what I heard. Uh, <laughs> Better to be pissed off than pissed on. I mean, but, I, mean uh, I wouldn't know unless you like that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, it's, it's like a real dirty turn, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, Welcome yeah. to the Power <laughs> Hour with Dirty Ron. <laughs> yeah, the, this is the Dirty Dirty Podcast right here. Uh, so I met uh, I met Mario here um, doing. Uh, we we did this, you know, we did a, an interview uh, beginning of pandemic, and then he helped me by producing the drive-in wrestling shows. You came out to one of those shows. Yeah, so that was early. That was like the first thing I got to do during COVID. Out here in California, we were like shut down really. Hardcore. Yeah, really strict. I actually left December 2020 and moved to Florida to pursue, to pursue professional wrestling training full time. Tight. But that was like the first thing I got to do after COVID fucking hit California was come down to the, what was it called? You know, the drive-in wrestling? You know, drive-in wrestling, yeah. You know, we were, I was doing stand-up comedy still at the time and um during covid like i was sitting in the fucking house so uh one of our buddies has one of those like transistors that you plug the, your sound system in and then you can turn it tune in on your radio just like the drive-in movie theater so you know that's that's what we did and i, I after the first two weeks of that i was like well shit like we could do this with wrestling and i know a guy that does live streaming so like what's up and then we fucking tried it and and ran with it yeah it was fun that was a it was a good time COVID was such a drastic game changer for so many people, including myself. So, yeah, you got out of here and went to Florida. Yeah, so and now COVID really changed a lot of my life. March 13th, 2020, which was a Friday the 13th, was supposed to be the biggest fight of my career. Main event on the Fox Sports Network for Lights Out Extreme Fighting's heavyweight title against a guy named Mike Quintero. And if you're good with dates, you'll remember March 12th, the world started shutting down. Dude, yeah, when Tom Hanks got it or whatever the fuck. Yeah, I woke up uh, March 12th, the day of weigh-ins, to find out weigh-ins are canceled, fights canceled, blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, and I put like 12 weeks of training into that. Like, oh, and I just dude. woke up and I was like, fuck! Oh, dude, I can't I can't. And he called everybody like, everything okay? Yeah. <laughs> dude. Uh, but yeah, and so three weeks to flatten the curve turned into motherfucking... Nine months later, still being on lockdown, and me moving to Florida to pursue professional wrestling training full time with uh, your buddy Matt Seidel. You actually oh, yeah. gave me a little shout out to Matt when I moved out there. Matt's like, I've never had this many people tell me to keep an eye on this guy, but I guess like three or four people. Yeah, uh, Aaron Stevens, Thunder Rosa, hit him up. We're like, Yo, keep an eye on this kid, fucking. Well, you know that's what a good you know good networking does. You know, like that, that. Then you have people that are out there. You know, like hey, if there's anything that I could do, I mean, shit. You saw me sitting outside BKFC, and you were like, hey, what's up? And I was like, I'm waiting for a ticket. And you're like, fucking come with me. I ended up working it out, but, like, you know, dude, yeah. like, that's what's up. It's all about helping out people when you can help them out. If, if at the very least, is you know, a text or a call or anything like that. So you know, Yeah, I appreciate that. But, yes, yeah, so we moved out of Florida December 2020 and made my in-ring professional debut October 1st, 2021. So now I have been in the ring for just under three years, like three and – three quarters of a year i guess or a little more than that and i mean you've you wrestled some dope matches you you know been involved with uh the nwa you've been involved with championship wrestling from hollywood you've been involved uh, right am i right yeah full uh, impact pro i've yeah. wrestled that pcw ultra control your narrative Ooh, we'll talk about that control your narrative story soon yeah um but yeah, a bunch of shows with a bunch of big name people. Um, especially, I made my debut in the main event of NWA Power uh, Christmas Special. Thirteen months into my wrestling career, those guys have been nice working for years and years and years. Well, you you come in as an athlete, you know, and like you know, back in the day, people were only training for you know, I'm talking like you know, sixties and seventies and eighties. Like you were only training for a month or two before they started throwing you in there to fucking get your ass beat by you know by the veterans. So, you know, like, it, and I'm not trying to diminish that, but I mean, like, the, naturally, you should be, you know, you're one of those people that should get that abs- exception right in, especially if you're, you know, you're training. You, you're already right. a fucking And so, I mean, like, like we were saying earlier with looks, um, having a look, being able to talk, and then, like, what can you do? Well, I already had a solid foundation of a brand built in legitimate combat sports, and in my opinion, the transition over is SDDank.com. 
If you're looking for anything related to dabbing, SD Dank Quartz has everything you need. From custom, unique designs to the hottest styles on the market. All at affordable prices. You can go to www.sddank.com and follow at SD Dank Quartz on Instagram for the most up-to-date information and dab lifestyle content. Years and years and years. Well, kidding. you you come in as an athlete, you know, and like you know, back in the day, people were only training for you know, I'm talking like you know, 60s and 70s and 80s. Like you were only training for a month or two before they started throwing you in there to fucking get your ass beat by you know by the veterans. So you know, like it, and I'm not trying to diminish that, but I mean, like the, naturally, you should be. You know, you're one of those people that should get that obse- exception right in, especially if you're you know you're training. You you're already right. a fucking. And so I mean, like athlete. like we were saying earlier with looks, um, having a look. Being able to talk, and then, like, what can you do? Well, I already had a solid foundation of a brand built in legitimate combat sports. And in my opinion, the transition over is, I wouldn't say easy, but I think easier than coming from nothing. Because I already understand how to manipulate a body. I already understand a bunch of positions and controls and blah, 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 this and that. Because right. pro wrestling is based off of real submission grappling. It's just now done, showed up a little bit. And so having a solid foundation in the roots of professional wrestling, I think, was a fantastic place to <coughs> place to come from. Um, and not just that, but I think that the carryover ability of the brand and persona is much stronger coming from pro wrestling. Because let's say you're an Olympic swimmer. Yeah. How much is that going to help you in your pro wrestling? I mean, yeah, you might get shot. But I think, like, he swims the fastest freestyle yeah, in the world. Yeah, like, yeah, right. Or this motherfucker, he's a world champion in jiu-jitsu. Like, he's a legitimate professional ass kicker, which, hashtag, professional ass kicker. Trademarked, you fucks, you can't steal that one. Is that right? Is that yours? Yeah, professional ass kicker. No shit. That's awesome. And the king of combat sports entertainment. And I learned I have to trademark shit, because some motherfuckers like to steal your own shit. Bang, bang, come up with your own shit gang, motherfuckers. Um, Yeah, that that was a specific dig at somebody. You know where that's from? The 49ers? No. No, that's you. Bang, bang, bullet. Bang, bang, bang whatever gang. Yeah. 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 But Who so, sold that? Fucking ass boys. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, they heard me say... So, I say bang, bang, NWA gang. Bang, bang, Dirty Run gang. Bang, yeah, bang, yeah. Bulletproof gang. Bang, totally. bang, Blackout. Bang, bang, what the fuck ever gang. Right. And so, at um, Coastal Championship Wrestling, where I was in, like the scumbag clique, where the scumbag gang. So, bang, bang, scumbag gang. The ass boys hear me say that. And within two weeks... It's trademarked an hour and a half from the venue that heard me say that. But, and they're they're calling themselves the Bullet Club Bang Bang Gang. They have a trademark now. Really? And then they linked up with um, Max Castor and his other guy, you know, the Scissor. Yeah, bang yeah. Bang Scissor Gang. That's, that's all my shit. They stole that shit. Man. Heard me say it, stole it, and they went and trademarked it in Jay White's name. That's fucked up, dude. And I can't take shots at Jay White, so. Yeah. Dude. I just sit back and shut up and say, Bang Bang, come with your own shit gang. But I know they were the ones who stole it. You fucks. Man, that's fucked up. That's fu- and, and, and comedy. But I have something to say to him when I see him. Oh, yeah? Like, I don't know which one of you two motherfuckers it was. If it was you or you. <laughs> but we could do a one-on-one. Two-on-one. Or you could bring your dad and we do a three-on-one. At the end of it, y'all gonna need 9 Oh, shit. You like that? That was pretty good, right? You had that in the holster. Did you, there's no way you came up with that no, on no, the spot. Get, You've had that in the no, holster. No, I've had that in the holster. Okay. That's, <laughs> I'm saving that. I'm saving that for one day. <laughs> I don't even want to call their dad. I looked up to their fucking dad. Right? But I'd imagine daddy be like, no, you can't beat my boys up. Who is in phenomenal shape for 60 Bro, fucking years old. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. I've, since I was a kid, and even today, I almost think that he, and this isn't a dig on anybody in any promotions, but I think he might be one of the best looking bodies at a promotion. Or like top five, bro. Like Without a doubt. Without a doubt. He's fucking he, he chiseled. Yeah. Chiseled. Um, but yeah. You well, like that? I'll go need Your your promo game is fucking on point, brother. Uh, well let's 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 talk about it. since you are an MMA to pro wrestling crossover. Yep. What what are what do you think are some of the best MMA to pro wrestling crossover. And obviously I want to go the opposite way too. But I think it's easier to go here first. They I, they started in MMA. They came over to pro wrestling. I would say that. Who, who's done the, the best? The top of my list starting MMA and then going pro wrestling has got to be probably Ken Shamrock. I Ken Shamrock, yeah. No doubt. I think Ken Shamrock leads the way of, you know, the world's most dangerous man. When he snapped, when he'd be doing the ankle lock. Totally. Like, I think he is probably, in my opinion, the... Yeah, yeah, there we go. The godfather of MMA guys coming over. Not that he was the first. Yeah. But I think he was the Who best. was the first? 
Probably Dan, Dan, Dan Severn. Severn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess. Um, yeah. Dan Severn also being on that list. I don't think Dan Severn had as good of an in-ring presence as Ken Shamrock did, um, or as For much sure. of the charisma and the energy and Without the character. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, not that Dan Severn isn't a fucking badass. Yeah, there's Dan up there. Uh, Dan but Seven, Dan Seven sure. you know, he's, he, he came to the ring with the NWA World Heavyweight title and the UFC belt. Like, yep. who, who, like, well, that's his OG. Oh, like, in terms of accolades within professional wrestling, how do you top that? With, without a doubt. Was he, was he the most decorated professional wrestling champion that came from MMA? Dan Severn? I mean, who else, who else won a belt? Like, that's a great question. I couldn't tell you the answer to that. Who else won a belt? Um, Let's see, I, I, I made a list just in case we needed to reference it. I mean, I would say that those are two of the biggest names for me to come over. <laughs> I like Matt Riddle a lot. I think Matt, Matt Riddle, Riddle does a lot of great yeah. stuff. I think he has probably had the, after Ken Shamrock, the best career in professional wrestling. But I don't feel like Ronda he's... Rousey. Ronda Rousey. I mean, you know. yeah, Ron, theme, I'm, no, I'm just saying people that have cut. I'll know, get, I'll get to Ron in a sec. Okay. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> but so with Matt Riddle, I don't think he relies as heavily on his mixed martial arts background, a little bit on his in ring stuff, but he's the king of bros. He basically, and I'm not digging him on this, but he's a guy who did MMA who came to pro wrestling. When mm-hmm. I said earlier, like, I don't want to be an MMA guy that comes from wrestling, I want to play Bulletproof Troop, the MMA fighter, in pro wrestling. Yes. I feel like Dan Severn and Ken Shamrock with those guys. I think Matt totally, Riddle came totally. to pro wrestling, became a pro wrestler, and again, not a dig, just a different route of going, totally. going down that thing. And I actually think it might have helped his career uh, a little bit better because he didn't get stuck in a box. Where I think that, you know, Ken Shamrock, given he went became inter- intercontinental champion, but there was no anything else for Ken. He was going to be Ken Shamrock, the world's most dangerous man. Period. Yeah. Ronda Rousey coming over. She's Ronda Rousey. Former UFC UFC champion Ronda Rousey, she's not going anywhere else. Um, I think Ronda Rousey got put in a very tough spot by being such a fucking high profile athlete with such a background and so forth. That how do you bring her to the show besides giving her a top fucking spot? Totally. That in my opinion, I'm not, and I didn't watch enough of her stuff, but not entirely ready for. And they they, they tried yeah. to give her the rub, like her putting Triple H in the arm bar, and Triple H like they tried to give it to her. I don't think that she has. And again, not a dig, but the type of personality that's as charismatic and showboaty to get along and pro- sure. get over in pro wrestling, whether you're sure. liked or not, you know. Say, say, I think Shayna Baszler did it better than Ronda Rousey. So that was as, be my as next. a pro wrestling, ki- you know, pro wrestler, yeah, for sure. Um, and not just that, but I feel like Shayna Baszler's come with a bunch of. She's got like a little like clo- or you know, she throws up a little clover hand sign. Where mm-hmm. I think that Shayna Baszler. Is and I'm surprised she hasn't gotten more love within the professional wrestling world. But I feel like there's also an extent of pro wrestling. Because she's not as pretty. It's got, I mean, like let's, let's yeah, be real. but you don't got to be pretty to be a fucking to a get bad that heel to get that love. No, you you I I, I disagree with you. I you know it's it's unfortunate, but in in this industry, like the reason she's got the spot that she did or ever had the spot that she did because she's such she overcame not being the prettiest. But if you look at generally. And you know this isn't a knock. Like I, I, ten out of ten people would agree with me. She, you know, like, but her her ability as an athlete, I think, way overcomes that. Look at the other, you know, other girls that have not been, you know, have that, those models. I looks. definitely agree that it helps you know? being fucking super pretty. I think, but being doubt. the MMA type, actually, you know, now that we're talking about this, she just had a match at I want to say NXT's last pay per view, a big event they did at UFC Apex, and she lost to Valerie Lorte. Uh, what's her name? Um... The new UFC girl who came over, Valerie Lord, uh, mm, I don't really watch it that much. Yeah, me neither. Um, I just saw that she lost to her. Um, but I think Shayna Bez just definitely belongs on that list. Um, and I think she makes a great heel, and I think she has the right amount of... I think she's done one of the best in keeping a move set that is true enough to her background. Yeah. Yeah, bringing it to pro wrestling, mm-hmm. and then character-wise being a very pro wrestler. Um, yeah. You know, which I have... Do you count uh, Alberto Del Rio as uh, cuz he started MMA before he came to pro wrestling, um, right? Yeah, I mean I, all I know about Alberto Del Rio in terms of MMA is that he got knocked out by Crow Cop with a mask on. There you um, go. Oh, he wore a mask? Yeah, he got fucking head kicked with a mask on when he fought Crow Cop. No Which shit. why a guy would fight with a mask on? I don't know. What what oh this had to be like in Japan or something. Yeah, pride. Yeah. <laughs> um, he wrestled with a fucking mask. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, how do I not know this? You know, another guy that's done fairly well is Tom Lawler. Yep, I again, had him on my list. I don't think he goes super heavy into being an MMA fighter. He's got kind of a little bit of a move set for it. I don't watch enough of his stuff to have as big an opinion. But I don't feel like when you look at him, like, oh, man, that guy's a badass fighter. 
you know, like, um, and I'm not digging at him or saying he's not a badass fighter. I'm just saying in terms of the amount of weight put into having that background. I think like it's another guy who did MMA who came to pro wrestling. And, like, and late- not a dig on people doing that. I just, I try to be the MMA fighter in pro wrestling. And so when I look at guys totally. who have had a mixed martial arts background and then come to pro wrestling, it's how much does that transition over. Otherwise, you're just another pro wrestler, in my opinion. Like, I- Ken was an MMA fighter in pro wrestling. Dan Seven was an MMA fighter or, like, a wrestler in, in pro wrestling. The- that wasn't there like in TNA like 2010, and they bring in a bunch of fucking UFC guys. It was like Tito Ortiz, Rampage Jackson was like there for a minute. Mario, do you know about this? Didn't TNA bring in like a bunch of fucking MMA fighters like 2010, 11? It's part of some. Uh, um, uh, Muhammad Law. Uh, yeah, King Mo. Yeah, King, King Mo, Mo definitely was in there. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, and there. I think I remember that. But those guys were just, like, there for a short stint. Yeah, I can't talk enough about them because I don't have an opinion. Another guy that does stand out to me that had a good background and I think has probably done maybe the best in professional wrestling as a career was Bobby Lashley. Legit fighter. Oh, he came from fighting to wrestling? Yeah, it he wasn't started the... wrestling. No, he was, he was fighting first. Okay, he I did not know that. over. Okay. Uh, and I think he's one of the guys who relied the least on his mixed martial arts background and then got the furthest as a pro wrestler. Like, where if you watch him pro wrestling, he's a big, strong, commercial-style pro wrestler. Not a dig. But I think that's what brought him as far as it was because he didn't get put in a box of being an MMA fighter only. But he was a very high-level collegiate wrestler um, mm-hmm. who fought mixed martial arts and stuff. And he's fucking massive. You look at that dude and he's fucking... So num- he's an action figure. Number number one on your list, Ken Shamrock. I, I can't yeah. disagree with that. Then... Where, D- Dan Severn? Number two, so like... Let's get a top five I guess here. I need... What is the criteria for judging? You know? Right, right. It's totally subjective. Uh, this is the Blake Bulletproof Troop fucking top five. I think, five. okay, so MMA people that have... I'm just going to say have come over and done the best in wrestling. I'm going to start with Ken Shamrock, who's also an intercontinental champion. Boom, yeah. Who might have made it the furthest as... Besides Bobby Lashley, probably man number two, because Bobby Lashley's been like United States champion... Um, and I've gotten matches with, like, former world champions where I think he was on a comparable level to <clears throat> Ken Shamrock in terms of accolades. Um, after that, probably Matt Riddle. I think Matt Riddle's USA champion and tag team champions tagged with fucking, um, it, you know, what was it, RK Bro with uh, yep, Randy, Randy Orton. Orton. You know, did fantastic. Um, I think that Shayna Baszler might be four. It's hard not to throw Ronda Rousey, but Ronda Rousey, because she main evented WrestleMania, which totally. is kind of hard to have been women's hard world champ. That. But at the same time, almost more of a shooting star within the industry than in a member of it, or like, you know, not, not definitely yeah. not. But like. It was a very short. She was only there like two years. Right. And right? again, yeah. not a dig, because yeah. fuck, she, she ready to shot. And where else could she go? But how long could she stay there? Like, right. right. That was, in my opinion, the only way to play Ronda Rousey. Totally. Uh, you know, what, what she, she's not going to be at all the shows. She's not going to be there like for a special long time. Attraction. She's going to come in, sure. do some shit, and then get over your, your top talent. Yep. And and then put somebody over on the way out. Right, exactly. That's, That's what yeah. She did. She'd come in. That's what it is. Badass Ronda Rousey. Own the scene for a fucking the top of the women's card for a second, and then put somebody over on the way out. It's the only way to play that, in my opinion. Um, Shayna so, Baszler, Bobby Lashley, who else? So we got we got Ken Shamrock, Ken Shamrock, Bobby Matt, Lashley, yeah, um, Matt Riddle, Matt Riddle, or I mean, Shane fuck, Baszler. I didn't see Dan Severn somewhere there because he was NWA World Heavyweight right. Champion. Dan Severn has to be on the top five, in my top opinion, top three right. probably. Okay, well there um, you go. NWA World Heavyweight Champ. What's totally. what's more important? In it, WWE Intercontinental during the Monday Night Wars. Uh, I think Ken Shamrock also won the NWA title too. I, it's possible at, at the beginning of. NWA TNA when it was TNA. Okay, it's definitely possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think so. But so, yeah, I guess those top three, Bobby Lashley, or so, Ken Shamrock, Bobby Lashley, Dan Severn, Matt Riddle. Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler. Okay. Um, I'd probably be fairly comfortable behind that that <laughs> list right there. All right, let's go the other way. Um, pro Brock wrestling Lesnar, into MMA, one, yeah, probably. without a doubt. Um, let me see, who else switched? So, Batista. Batista did it. Batista fought. I don't think he did fantastic in his mixed martial arts debut. Um, but the dude's a legitimate brown belt under um, Hoist Gracie lineage. Okay. Dude is very legitimate in terms of submission grappling. Big guy, very charismatic, and has superseded wrestling and combat sports. Where now he is a guy who you see He's in... a Hollywood guy. Yeah, Marvel yeah. fucking movies, which... Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yes and all, no. All we had when we grew up was like Hulk Hogan in movies. And now... 
they're all over the place. Yeah, for real. Uh, I mean, we we are the best entertainers, though. I mean, look, I, I'm you know, so uh, I thousand percent right? agree, and that's part of what my plan is. I don't want to segue back into me yet, but is to build the foundation of my brand in combat sports, become a much better entertainer, able to connect to the crowd in professional wrestling, and take that to Hollywood. Without a doubt. Um, Without a doubt. I don't want to segue out of that. I'd say the next name we got to bring up is CM Punk, who went 0-2 in combat sports and got a lot of hate on it, probably from both industries. Um, I, going I to flew out to his fucking ch- uh, first fight in no Cleveland. Shit. Yeah. Um, I was there with uh, uh, fucking uh, Seidel was there with us, my boy Biggity. And um, uh, T.J. Wilson, T. Uh, fuck him. Yep. Him. <laughs> um, so, you know, and he got a lot of hate from both industries, you know. But at the same time, and people are like, oh, you're gonna give this guy a debuter in his UFC debut. You're gonna debut in the UFC, and and I'll be honest, at the time I was been fucking training for like, what do you make it? Probably like 2017, 16. I've been training for like 15 years. I'm like this motherfucker who barely trains, starting in the UFC, and like. At the time, I had some hate, too, because I'd been working so hard. And For sure. And right into this spot. For sure. But, you know... I think they should have given him, given him a, more of a tomato can. I think it, they would have been beneficial for everybody had, had they given him somebody to beat and knew that they were doing that. But you, gotta, you do got to respect the integrity of the UFC to not do that. I just don't agree with it business-wise because there was a huge bump in pay-per-view buys. Yeah. I mean, I was there. With fucking WWE guys, like, fucking hanging out watching the show. Like, so... And at the end of the day, the UFC is a is for-profit a business, business for that business. is there to make money and sell pay-per-views. Yeah. Um, and so CM Punk, like, he went in and he tried, and I heard that he was training hard at Duke Rufus' school, like, with legit guys totally. and a legit camp and taking it serious. Um, went you got to applaud but, him for that. Yeah, I, I, 100%. Got to. got to. And um, at the time, I had some spite because I'd been working so hard, and blah, 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 blah. But that was actually a big turning point in my career as well because I'm sitting back like watching guys like CM Punk get an opportunity that accolades-wise, he didn't deserve. Right. But at the same time, it made me realize fighting is the entertainment industry and guys are not, it's not always accolade involved. The UFC is not necessarily worried about who's going to be the best fighter in the world. They're worried about who's going to be the most entertaining fight in the world. So guys like Conor get to call their shots. And so I'm watching guys like Connor get catapulted through the ranks, making way more money, getting favorable matchups, CM Punk debut in the UFC, because yeah. these guys are entertaining and they can sell pay-per-views. So I'm sitting back like, man, I need to get better at putting asses in seats and selling pay-per-views. How do I boost my entertainment value? I need to come up with a fucking gimmick. Bulletproof troop. Known for dropping warheads on people. That's 100%. Watching that happen... I sat back. Is that and, where that, that what motivated you to do that? 100%. Without a doubt. Cool. See, and I would say particularly CM Punk in that because yeah. CM Punk getting an opportunity that I didn't feel like was necessarily deserved and had some spite on at first. But you can sit here and hate on people getting great opportunities. And instead of hating, which I think is a very natural thing for people to initially do, be like, oh, what about me? I sat back and I was like, well, man, what about me? I'm going to go out there and do this for myself. How do I make myself more marketable, more people interested in my shit? I'm going to create a brand. I'm going to start coming up with catchphrases. You know, like, and I already talk shit, and, but that's when I started wearing the grenade chain. Totally. You know, that's how, my first fight after that, I had the grenade chain on, like, calling Be, myself bulletproof. Being true. memorable. Being memorable. A thousand percent, exactly. Being memorable. Um, and so CM Punk was a massive influence on that, um, his debut in the UFC. Yeah. So I got to have CM Punk on that list. Also for fighting in the UFC, which most guys have not, that's the peak of combat sports in my opinion well without a doubt you know they got the best fighting the best you know and every time i listen to an interview with dana white it's like that's what we that's what we're trying to do here sure it's not a hundred percent like that but nothing is right it's all business at the end of the day but that's what they're trying to do the best fight the best and you know we've seen guys that are outside of the ufc uh you know their their brand takes a big fucking hit you know because ufc is a place to be uh, let me ask you, you know, uh, pro wrestling, you know, MMA crossover. Let's talk about some of the celebrity boxing a little bit, you know, uh, or guys that aren't boxers boxing. I went to the the Jorge Masvidal versus Nate Diaz boxing match at the Honda Center. Fucking loved it. I don't know, man. I I like watching guys like that. I w- entertainment. You know, in, in that's the, what people just need to understand world. is, and even combat sports. I tell you this: fighting is the entertainment industry. Totally. And I think too many of you are caught up on thinking that fighting is just fighting. Like, well, I'm a fighter. I fight. I don't sell tickets. I don't promote events. I fight people. Like Floyd Mayweather changed that. I feel like. Yeah, it, but it's because that, he made people hate him. 
But you're talking about on a massive scale oh, and yeah. a guy who's a fucking smart businessman. I'm talking about the average fucking fighter now. Totally. Or even potentially the average wrestler. I, I pay, get paid to wrestle, not to promote events, like, which blows my mind. Okay, fine. Yeah, don't promote yourself. Like, I, I never got that. Like, I, I always do well selling merch at shows because I bring my merch. I set it up and I make sure that I'm telling people free pictures. Come over, to, come over to me. Hopefully, I'll be able to sell you something. If not, whatever. At least you got a picture and it, it was memorable because you already saw me do my thing in the ring. But now is my time to really solidify Connect. why you should be a fucking fan of mine, right? Connect. So, and that's what, you know, I think that's what you do a very good job of. You know, Thank you. I appreciate is, is that. connecting and being memorable, but also like being what people expect a fighter or pro wrestler to be. You know, like like sure, you know, like somebody might be a, have an awesome look, be able to talk, right? Do great in the ring, but are they great outside of the ring too? Are they great with connecting with people outside of the ring? Because that's step four after being good in yep, the ring. Yep, a thousand percent agree. And I think that's one of the things that makes it easy for me is. I'm the same dude cutting the promo as walking around in regular life, as in the ring, as dealing with fans, so I don't have to put on a mask. The volume gets turned up, no doubt, but it's the same motherfucker, so there's not like a having to, I don't even want to call it turning it on, because it's like kind of always sort of on. Yeah. Is it showtime loud? No, of course not all the time. Uh, but if you got to be out there pretending to be somebody, and they meet you at fucking McDonald's, are you going to be the same motherfucker? I'm going to be the same dude. Totally. Totally. And I think that absolutely helps. And I think also a genuineness in interactions with people. Because if you're not genuine in the ring, given you might be playing a character, blah, blah, this and that. But, like, and they come up and meet you in public, are you going to be that character? Like, how genuine is, are you going to have to totally shift into something? Like, No, I and it, when I became Dirty Ron, because I played many different wrestling characters. But when I became Dirty Ron, I was like, that's me. That's basically me just turned up a little bit. You know, and uh, up until... Turn up uh, a little bit and over the line a little bit. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, up until, you like dancing uh, on that line, Ron. Oh, uh, dude. Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, right, because like, you know, uh, up until I had to clean up my act over the last, you know, couple of years, uh, you know, somebody come up with drinks or drugs or like whatever. It's like, it's fucking everywhere, man, you know, so, uh, and I, and I felt that there was a part of me that wanted to be who people wanted me to be, but I had to dial that back a little bit because of... How extreme I was putting myself out there to be. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, I've definitely heard some Dirty Ron stories. This uh, fucking asshole, you won't believe what he said at this show. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, fuck. Okay. So here's, here's, here's a quick story. Here we go. No, over the weekend, um, we're doing a show in Bakersfield. And uh, I'm coming, driving home from Bakersfield. And the venue says, um, uh, we're sorry. You know, great show last night. We're sorry we're not going to be able to have you for future events. And I go, why? They go, well, uh, uh, some, some of your wrestlers were saying some racist things. And I go, oh, my God, who? And they were like, you. And I was like, what? And they go, yeah, when you call the Mexicans illegals. And I was like, dude, like, I was like, do I got to explain to you guys pro wrestling is a morality play? And, you know, it's good versus evil, and the bad guys got to say bad guy shit, so you want to see the good guy beat them. That's why most of the bad guys won that night. So you guys come back for our next show to see the good guys hopefully overcome evil, right. bad, right? And, I, and they're like, well, that doesn't take away from some people didn't know you were acting. And I go, really? I wear clown paint and call myself Dirty Ron McDonald. And audience members didn't know I was acting. Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I've said some wild shit. Extremely wild shit. You know, like, I, some guy's talking in the crowd. I'm like, I will come out there and suck your dick right now. You know, like, I will say the wildest shit while in paint around a wrestling ring like so you know like i don't know for some reason i feel like you'd say that in real life too though i you know <laughs> i would say that because i here's why it's so off-putting if somebody looks at you in the eyes because you're being loud while i'm doing some sort of performance stand-up comedy or i mean you definitely didn't have anything to say i bet yeah uh, right you're just like uh <laughs> do i want this guy to suck my dick right now or not <laughs> um hey uh, are you are you taking uh, any more mma matches or is it all pro wrestling these days We'll see. Okay. You never know well, what the future holds. Call uh, my last top. fight was supposed to be the main event uh, for the Lights Out Machine Fighting Heavyweight title, and there have been discussions about it. So, like, we'll see. Well, we'll call, that- call somebody out right now. Who, who, do you, who do you think for sure that if you could call them out and you could get in a fight with anybody in the entire world, the, 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 the most notable opponent, who could you call out and beat? I mean, plenty of people. 12, who, who would I really like the top, to fight? The, the, you know, the... 
Okay. I'm, I'm talking about who I'm going to call out and try and fight. It's not going to be an MMA fight. There's just a lot of people I want to, whose asses I'd like to beat no. in professional <laughs> wrestling. No, I'm saying it, make an MMA call out. Who, like in the entire MMA world, all organizations, no contracts are, are you know, are, are valid. Who would Blake Bulletproof Troop fuck up right now? Not, you know, I mean, uh, tw- you know, 12, 12 to 16 weeks. Of I'm not even going to say any names. So I was about to say one, and I'm like, I'm going to get myself canceled for saying that. Um, say it. <laughs> say it. we got to push this fucking podcast. <laughs> no, um, I'm, no, I'm not, I, got, I got myself too close to being canceled for having an opinion on certain things. All right, so Dave Marquez. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I like Dave. Dave and I are cool. I wouldn't I'm sure you Dave. do. I don't. No, you don't like me. Well, he already mentioned it earlier. The ass boys is going to be top on the fucking okay, list. Okay. Yeah, two on one. No, ass come on. Boys. We already did that. Come on, give me something better than that. I need, I need a clip. Who are you going to call out? Who are in who in the MMA world? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who who are in... Because w- w- you would wrestle what? Or uh, fight at 170, 185? 205? I'm like 240. 205. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. My bad. I fought I, at 171. See, I'm like... Right this minute, I'm like 235. Mm-hmm. Um... But when I was, I fought at 170 once, and like, here's the thing, I can make 170 again, I can be 170 tomorrow. Jesus. I'd have to tomorrow? cut my dick off to do it, but I'd be there in one snip. <laughs> I, I set myself up for that one. <laughs> you want me to suck your dick? <laughs> I'll suck it right off, you can fight at 170 tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so, t- 205. Um, you fucking up Alex Pereira? No, I wouldn't be the fight I'd call. I don't know. I'm not even going to... All right. I'm not going to call out anybody at the moment. All right. Uh, uh, boo. Yeah. It's all good. Um, <laughs> everyone has a promotion these days. Uh, Jorge Masvidal has Game Bread Fighting. Uh, fucking uh, Mike Perry just came out with some dirty, dirty boxing. boxing. Uh, what would uh, Bulletproof Troops be fucking promotion be called? Uh, and what would it be? If you if you could make uh, you know some small changes... To how some fighting organization would be, what would it be? Not necessarily just the name, you know, just like probably bare knuckle Muay Thai. Oh yeah. If I had to pick something new that was different, yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of all the bare knuckle stuff that's been coming out. Fucking love it. Um, you know, dirty boxing is essentially bare knuckle with punches and elbows. Mm-hmm. Um, BKFC, which I'm a huge fan of, bare knuckle fighting championships, I think has probably one of the most exciting forms of a. Uh, Combat sports right now. I think I'm bummed that Mike Perry ugh. fucking got his ass. Goddamn! Not kick. surprised at all. I told him it was going to happen. I'm just about you did. I, I you were one of the first people that I texted. You uh, Adam Hunter was like, oh, they had sparred before, and Jake Paul fucked him up. Well, so I told him when I was like, what's going to happen? He's going to play. The, like I even broke the whole thing down for somebody, and I thought around round six, Jake would start running away with the fight, not stop the fight. Yeah. And I post that, and then my buddy's like, oh my god, this is exactly what happened. Like. Yeah, yeah, that's what I fuck. I work as a sports analyst, bro. That's fucking what I do. Right. Um, so yeah. Oh, so bare knuckle so Muay Thai. Uh, game bread uh-huh. uh, fighting is bare knuckle MMA. So I think it's just taking a great sport and doing a bare knuckle version of it. Um, and I think Muay Thai is probably the most exciting combat sport. Um, I just think shorten the rounds. But BKFC is five two minute rounds, and it's like a drag race. The motherfuckers scrapping. It's a boring fight. They're out of the ring quick. Yeah. But, but most fights don't go past the third round. Dude, you bring fucking, fucking awesome. knees, elbows, and kicks. Like even potentially like bare knuckle left way, which has headbutts too. Like bare knuckle what has headbutts? Left way. Oh yeah. It's like the Thai version of a uh, Muay Thai, like the very old school where you can headbutt too, and it's like bare knuckle, or, like little like tiny rope on the hand. Okay. Um. Dude, that when I when I saw bare knuckle, I was like, "Oh, this is badass!" And immediately, I thought, "This has got to be more dangerous." But then, you know, as I as I'm, you know, I'm more of a fan, and more information comes out, like, "Well, people aren't swinging as hard." Well, you so, know, so you're not, you know, like. So here's the big difference: is bare knuckle compared to regular with gloves on. Mm-hmm. A defensive wise, if a guy puts his gloves in front of his face and you've got twelve or bigger ounce gloves, you almost have a shield. Right. Bare knuckle. These are big windows. The handle slide right through those. Totally. Totally. And so the next thing is, by having smaller windows, you in much more precision is in, is important because you got to hit this part of the face. Right. You throw an over, looping overhand and catch someone right here. Yeah. Yeah, you might wobble them, but you might break your hand and be out. You got one or two, one one weapon left. Totally, totally, totally. So having precision strikes, and then the next thing is, this is basically skin, thin bone, skin like thin skin and yeah. bone. Oh god. Where when you start touching people's faces, faces get chewed up way faster in bare knuckle boxing compared so you're not taking as much concussive force to the head repeatedly. 
it's a lot less strikes over a shorter period of time that do more damage. Um, because it, it looks a lot like more a of a fucking superficial damage yeah. where guys might be getting teeth knocked out or cuts on their face, but their brain is not absorbing shock after shock after shock after shock. Um, with a big old pillow on the fucking hand. Kind right. Of well, I think they describe it as a pillow is not fair because the glove well, no, doesn't no, do I, a ton. But, no, like, yeah. it definitely, in my opinion, is... And I only have five, two-minute rounds. I think there's a lot more fights that get put away very quickly where guys... You start yeah. looking at statistics of a boxing match compared to statistics of a bare-knuckle boxing match. And they're oh, significantly different. You know, but the thing is, just like you mix martial arts fighting, the mileage comes from the training camp. Totally. How many times you get punched in the head leading up to this fight? You know, like, another big thing about fighting is weight cutting. You know, like, then again, if you're cutting a bunch of weight right before your fight where your brain doesn't have as much of a liquid cushion to bounce around in. Um, How do you feel not, about that? Should there be a weight uh, weight loss? I or, think you know, Weight cutting clause? Well, that's, yes. I think that guys shouldn't be able to cut a ton of weight or there should be day of weigh-ins where guys have to fight very, very close to their natural walking weight. Um, or at least what they're naturally walking at at that point in time. But the only way that's ever going to stop is they need to implement rules for it to stop. Like, I was cutting 30-plus pounds, and I cut, like I said, I fought at 170, came down like 205. It's crazy. Um, when I fought 85, I was coming down from like 215, 220. When I fought 205, I was coming down from like 235, 240. It's wild. You know, um, where I think it put handcuffs on my body's ability to perform. Mm -hmm. and I think we'd be seeing better fights out of guys that were more evenly matched up by cutting out, by taking weight cutting out of the equation. Yeah, like uh, the, the Ryan Garcia fight. You know, what, there was an issue, you know, there was a... Uh, yeah, against Derek Haney, a rehydration clause. Yeah, uh, he was like, what, what was he, over you know, over by a pound? Uh, the, the most recent one, the Ryan yeah, Garcia Yeah, he was over by like five or six pounds. Yeah, and he, like, he paid the fucking... The, Which typically what happens, you pay a percentage based on your weight. Paying a percentage, but then, like, he was like, oh, well, that's because I didn't have to cut all this weight, you know, and I didn't have to fucking rehydrate, and I just get, didn't give a shit, and I was more energetic than the right, fight. Right, 100%. But so I think it has to come down from um, the powers that be have to stop that, you know? Like, when I used to work for Chief last year, say, the Major League Soccer team, I was on the sports medicine team for them. I actually had a career before I started fighting people. Oh, right on. Um, but so watching it, I would be talking to the players today during lunch. I was like, bro, it drives me crazy how y'all flop on the ground. Like, you're all injured just to get a call. And I'm on the sports medicine team. So we're like, is he hurt? Is he hurt? Trying to, like, check him out. Faking? Gets the call, hops up, and runs away. And like, all right, he's fine. Is he selling the injury? But so I'd give him a hard time about that. And they're like, yeah, but if you're not doing that, you're at a disadvantage because the other team is. It needs to come down from the top that that can't be done anymore. Yeah. So everyone's on an even playing field because it's not going to happen otherwise. And I was like, well, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, so same thing with, I think, cutting weight and fighting there needs to be a some type of regulation put on by the athletic commissions that are um, universally followed to prevent that from happening because guys are going to feel like they're at a disadvantage particularly guys that have spent a lifetime of cutting weight like like wrestlers yeah. they're used to having their body body being extreme. able to perform in a dehydrated state so right. like in my opinion that they should they should do something about it because it's just a matter of time until and not that weight cutting itself is going to severely hurt somebody, although it kind of can, but some of the ramifications or increased um, volatility of an injury as a result of it by, like, let's say, having less water in the brain. The brain takes a bunch of shots, and now you have a traumatic brain injury. Yeah. That maybe would have been there, maybe it wouldn't have been, but you're increasing the likelihood and the vulnerability of some type of injury. Same, I mean, same thing with your ligaments, everything. If we reduce our water significantly in the body, so much that we're like dehydrated, like awake, we're losing water out of our ligaments, our tendons, and so forth. We're going to have more knee injuries or, by, you know, muscle Without tears or concussive, you know, like trauma on the brain, where it's, we don't know yet, but I'm sure that there's an increase in the potential capacity for those types of things to happen by being in such a reduced hydration state. Like, and it's... Bro, it's, you almost feel like a ghost when you're really dehydrated. I couldn't believe I made 170. Yeah, the the one boxing match that I did against uh, that other comedian a few years ago, uh, we agreed on a certain weight. You know, um, I was I figured out, you know, all my diet and all that. And then, like, I lost 13 pounds in, like, two and a half days. I, I knew what I was doing, but when I got down to it, I was like, oh, my God. And I gained back, like, nine pounds in 24 hours before yeah. the fight. You know, because I just... Full ass Gatorade, you know, going in the sauna for like an hour, Bro, hour and this. a half. I'd lose. I'd get down to the last like day and a half. I'd lose about twenty something pounds. It's crazy. And I'd put on twenty five before I got back in the ring. That's nuts. That's twenty five pounds. That's, that's unfair. Three gallons of milk. That's unfair. I mean, that's kind of unfair, right? I mean, you're you're within the rules, right. but 
Doesn't that sound kind of unfair? Right? Doesn't that sound a little Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's right. Yeah, true story. Um, <laughs> uh, we're getting close to wrapping up. Uh, if there's anything else that you want to bring up, plus your plugs and anything, and I got a good uh, outro question. Um, how much time do we have? We got about 10 minutes for me to tell the oh, CYN yeah. story? Yeah, yeah. Please. All righty, here's the CYN story. So, Control you asked me earlier narrative. about hitting people, what my, like, thing is. You know, I said that, A, got to be able to look myself in the eyes, that, B, when somebody changes, or when somebody touches me when somebody changes the touch barrier yeah so here's an interesting story where as i've gotten better about things and i've even done anger management since this point in time and i'm better about this now um so i'm working for cyn control your narrative owned by braun Strowman and ec3 braun Strowman, my one and only pro wrestling match on monday night raw there you go yeah. um so at cyn i'm known as death i come in and i just fucking slaughter people like four or five people at a time never even bumped in the show well had like six appearances never bumped oh yeah um, and each time I'd slaughter like one to five five people. So this night, um, very Braun Strowman esque. Yeah, right. Well, I yeah. was death. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Braun brought me in. Oh yeah. And so I'm death at this show. So I come out, I clear the ring of like five people, and we have there's like an after party at this bar called Tin Roof in Orlando. There's like a big back room where the ring is, and then they go down a hallway and there's like a big room where there's like live music and so forth. And so that's where our after party is. But it's a bunch of random people in there, some wrestling fans handful of the boys from the show and so then we have like a big vip table in there that's facing the music and so i'm out there with one of my chicks and she's into girls and so like we're dancing with girls on the dance floor and like grandma's out there dancing by herself so we start grinding on grandma oh yeah but having, having the most fun in the bar it's so, like i'm like 245 this time fucking jacked in a tank top and i come over and we're standing with the table behind me looking out at the music and so we're, like, talking, and out of nowhere, I get pushed in the back, like, hard as fuck. Like, I had to, like, take two steps to catch myself. Like, like, as... like you felt, like, this is somebody that you, you... Like, when you When you felt it, you were, like, either somebody I know really well, or somebody which was, like, wants to fight me. Right. Right, I mean, so like, yeah. I know the VIP table, like, I can, like, fucking reach back and, like, put my hands on the table. I'm okay. So, like, take two steps forward, it was hard as fuck. Like, hard enough that, like, I was kind of mad. Right. But I knew it was someone behind me, so I, like... Take a second. I turn around, expecting maybe like Braun Strowman or like one of the boys, like somebody that you knew. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Some, but even then, I wasn't like. Still, right? Still, but I mean, it's a little bit more acceptable if you get accidentally a, well, pushed even, a little, I knew, too, I knew a little I too hard. Shoved. Right, a little too hard. Maybe somebody was trying to do a little lighter. Okay, so I sorry. take a second not, yeah. and I turn around, and there's like this forty-year-old white dude sitting down at the edge of the table, laughing hysterically, looking me in my eyes. I don't know who this motherfucker is. Right. So I lean in. I'm like close. I'm like. Couple inches from his face. Big smile on my face, my man. You smell what he had for lunch. Man, I'd appreciate breath, it yeah. if you wouldn't touch me. And as I'm like nicely asking, this dude erupts in laughter on my face. Like so obnoxiously loud, I can like feel the sound waves coming out of his mouth. So I lose the smile. I'm like, nah, for real, motherfucker. You touch me again, me and you're about to have a motherfucking problem. Because he's at the VIP table. So you know. Like, so he knows who the fuck we are. He knows right. why. Like this wasn't just like some random. It wasn't my boy. It was some motherfucker fucking with me, like testing me. Right, right. So, like, I'm like, I'm a fucking, you know, I'm about to have a fucking problem. And it's a brown some chick tap. She's like, hey, hey, it's cool. He's with us, blah, blah. And I was like, it's cool. I'm just talking to him. And I look back, and he's like, hey, <laughs> Like, all, like, laughing. Like, I got Brent. And so I leaned back in. I was like, nah, for real, motherfucker. I need to know that you don't have an understanding that you're not going to touch how, how me. How big is this guy? Probably, like, six foot 240-ish. Similar size. Yeah, but he's sitting down. I don't know how right. big he is. Right, right, okay. Uh, Bald head. But I'm, I'm trying to think, is the guy my size, like, fucking fucking with you? Like, so, like, ready well, y'all, you'll find out who it is before the end of the story. For sure. Um, well, I would hope so. <laughs> so, like, I'm like, nah, for real, motherfucker. Like, I need notes. You know, I, I, I need notes. You have no, you and I have an understanding. You're not going to touch me again. And he's like, oh, do you, mate? Why don't you go fuck yourself? Okay. Smack! And I open his head, smack this motherfucker, and knock him the fuck out. Starts, falls, and, like, hits his head in the booth, like, out, out. Like, this is like slap fight, like some Dana White slap fight. Oh, shit. I fucking starched this dude with an open hand slap. Fucking knocked out, out, out. And so Braun Strowman jumps up and, like, screams, Get the fuck out. What do you think you're fucking doing? Blah, 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 blah. To you. Yeah. So I just starched some dude at the VIP table for, for pushing me. And I don't know if they'd seen this or what the deal is. Right, right, right. Eventually I found out that he had. And, like, there's more to the story that I found out later, but which I'm not going to get into at the time. Which, like, um, I'm just like, all right. And I'm like, yo, let's go to the chick. I'm not even going to argue with this fool right here. It's the wrong spot. Like, so I walk over to the bar, and I'm, like, trying to fucking, hey, hey, excuse me. I'm, like, trying to close my tab. Like, fuck. Hey, excuse me. I'm, I'm, I'm like, that guy at the bar. He's, like, he's waving the bar. Right, right. 
And I was like, God damn it. And all the fucking brown comes up and he starts to, you motherfucker, blah, 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 like screaming at me. And like, I'm 6'4", two, I'm like 45, maybe 250 at the time. And he's like 6'8", 350. Like, he's giant. He's a giant. But this motherfucker's like right here yelling at me. And the bar just, shoop. <laughs> Bart's like the fucking Red Sea. Because it's like most... Godzilla, one of his Godzilla fights. <laughs> <laughs> Bartender runs over, are you two okay? I'm like, yeah, I just need to close my tab so I can leave. Get him out of here. Fuck him I'm like, Damn. fuck, it comes right back. Shh, thank you. Fuck out of here. You're done with CYMO. And I end up leaving. Uh, I'm not about to argue with this dude in the middle of the bar after I knock some guy out. Like, all right, I'll leave. It's wrong time. We'll talk tomorrow. Yeah. And, um. Uh, I end up getting let go from C- I show up to, like, content day for CYM the next day, and, like, I get fucking sent home. And I find out that uh, the guy I knocked out was WWE NXT former tag team champion Danny Birch. Oh, okay. Um, which, me and Danny are cool, and I almost feel bad telling the story sometimes I like Danny. But at the same time, it goes along with what's your, what's my thing of not hitting people? Or like, And I get, now it's I give people three chances. I ask them nicely. Listen, my man, appreciate if you didn't touch me again. Totally. Hey, no, I don't let them know I'm serious. Like, hey, no, like, for real, like, don't motherfucking touch me. Yeah. And a third time, I need to know that you don't have to understand you ain't going to touch me because I'm about to knock you the fuck out. Oh, go fuck myself? Okay. ba blow Totally. So that's kind of my rule of thumb. I give people three chances um, for the most part. Uh, and I actually really like Danny and I feel bad about it. We we eventually... Go fuck yourself, future. mate. <laughs> yeah, and I, but I did. I fucked myself. <laughs> I, I fucked hey, myself, too. You just following directions. Because, um, I mean, well, the thing is... He told you to do the thing the that thing you is, did. The thing is, a story that gets told. If you hear what I said, you're like, man, that dude deserved to get slapped. Yeah, totally. But if you hear the shortened version, Troop hit a guy at a show, and now nobody can have shows at that venue anymore. All right, you know, Who's the asshole now? That is a version of the story. <laughs> it's uh, not an so, accurate version. <laughs> but, I mean, depend- it is in a nutshell. But it, 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 there's a lot Very of... Very small nutshell. Right, but there's a lot of... Parts that are left out of context with that. Total, well, without a doubt, you know. And like, if you, if well, back back to Danny. Right. Danny and I have since worked on shows together, and he came up to me and apologized. He was like, I was going through a lot of time. I was going through a divorce, and I had all these things that you know, I stopped drinking. Like, and I apologized, man to man. I apologized for what happened. Was anything to do to make it right? Like, let me know. And so he's giving me great advice about where we worked on a handful of shows together. Gave me great advice. Watch my matches. Give me real because guys will give you some feedback. Yeah. Or guys will give you some feedback, and so I cool. actually really like. Um, Martin Stone is real. I, Martin Stone, I really like Martin as a person. I respect him as a man for doing that. And like, bro, we all go through hard times and and dumb shit. And like, and he probably got away. With, I heard like he used to punk out a lot of little kids. Hmm. And so like, you know, fucking learned a lesson a little bit, but came back as a man about it. And like, and totally. now I consider himself somebody that like I would consider a friend oh, and yeah. somebody who I could really get like. I feel like real advice back from, or like I've invited to come watch fight because I get free tickets like every fight I want to go to, and so I invite him to fights or like. But yeah, that's that's my CYN story. But now I got forever let go of CYN for that. Um, CYN doesn't really have shows anymore. But it put me. They in a, change them. I think they're an NWA <laughs> affiliate or some shit now. Yeah, what's well, because? Yeah, kind of. But yeah, put me in a weird spot with. Uh, and I think that that story's gotten around that. I just got mad and I fucking hit somebody at a show, which I wouldn't say is entirely accurate. Um, but in, again, in a nutshell, it is. But I wasn't even mad. I was just like, oh, all right, well, we're just... Because that would be pushed me that hard. Right. What's next? For spit sure. My, there's, what, you're gonna, where you do you go from there? Right. You're going to spit in my face? Are you going to hit me? Like, where... What, what was he thinking was the next move? Get smacked? <laughs> Probably not, but like... No. That, that was the last move. That's, I mean, like, you know... We're just going to go right to checkmate. <laughs> I ain't going to play this game. Well, yeah, I mean, you did for a second. You were, you know, you're like, hey, what's up? Hey, I'm making sure you're good. No? Okay, boom. Well, three, three, three strikes. Yeah. Nicely laugh in my face obnoxiously. Like, no, for real. Life is baseball. Third time, like, listen, motherfucker. I'm like... I didn't know this ain't going to happen yet because I'm going to fucking knock you out. Life is Go baseball. Go fuck yourself. Uh, last question before we get out and then drop your shit. Commentary, pro wrestling, MMA. Fuck, Mary kill. Um, fuck mixed martial arts. Mary commentary. Kill professional wrestling. All right. That's what's up. Bam. Bulletproof, where do we see you, motherfucker, all over the shit? So you will see me a variety of different places coming up. I will be wrestling for WWN Full Impact Pro this Sunday. Swearing up against Baby Keith of the Miami Boys. I've already taken two of y'all out. I underestimated the first two, and Xander almost got over on me. 
But I ain't making the same mistake with you, baby, Keith. I'm going to roll you up and smoke you in that ring, baby. Puff, puff, pass out. That's WWN Sunday. Commentary Saturday in Tampa. Following weekend, I'll be doing commentary in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So a whole lot of talking. And then on Sunday, a whole lot of walking, baby. Bang, bang. Who lights out? And all you can also catch me at BlakeTroop.com, at BulletproofTroop.com, at BulletproofTroop on Instagram, at BigTroop22 on Twitter or X, whatever the F it's called these days. Come on over. Grab yourself some merch. It's not too late to jump on the Bulletproof Troop hype wagon because we are just getting started. Less than three years of the professional wrestling game, and you can expect that much more in the next three, five, ten. Who knows, baby? Locked, cocked, and ready to rock. Bang, bang. There it is. Bulletproof troop, my man. Appreciate you. Great seeing you, my man. No doubt. Be good or, or be good at it. Be good at it. You fucking know. That's it right there. Hell yeah.